Hey mathematics learners, welcome to distance learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, guys, we are still going through the May or June 2022 mathematical uh, literacy paper two, right? That was written by the great twelve learners. And in today's video tutorial, guys, we are going to be focusing on question one point two. And in question one point two, guys, we are basically applying all that we know um when it comes to calculating surface area okay so before we get started with today's video tutorial guys please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel please make sure that you've clicked on that notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a new video tutorial guys and also don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really helps the channel grow and it helps the channel to reach more learners that are not better than you can okay so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial all right so it says the sketch below shows a standard brick with dimensions used in south africa so the sketch of a standard brick we are told that the length your longest side is your length right then that is your width of your brick and that is the height of your brick right so we told that the height is 70 millimeters the width is 112 millimeters and the length is 240 millimeters okay so it says use the information above to answer the questions that follow it says state which formula a b or c below can be used to calculate the total surface area so before we even go into just checking which formula is correct we need to know when we are calculating the total surface area of a brick, what do we do? Okay, how do we calculate the total surface area of a rectangular prism, right? This is a rectangular prism or a brick, all right? So I'm just going to quickly draw my rectangular prism here, okay? So we know that the longest side, it looks a bit different, but it's still the same. The longest side is 240 millimeters, so that is my length, okay? Then our width is 112 millimeters, okay? And we are told that our height, okay, that is our height, is 70 millimeters. So guys, when we are calculating the surface area of a 3D shape, okay? When you're calculating the surface area of a rectangular prism, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, how many faces does this shape have? If you're able to basically determine how many faces you have, then we know that we want to use those total, we want to calculate the areas of all those faces, and then we are going to add them up together. Okay, so now in this case, it's all about us just determining which faces share the same dimensions. Okay, so the first thing, like I mentioned, is just we need to determine how many faces we have, right? So if you can even just go out right now and just take a random brick if you can and just count how many surfaces or faces does that brick have so you'll count the top part and the bottom part of that brick right that's two then the side and that other side of your brick that's four right and then this front side and the other back side of your brick okay so it's your top and your bottom those are two right top and your bottom is two your side and your side so your left and your right side that's another two right and then the face that is facing us here that face that is facing us and the back part of that that is six so your rectangular prism in total has six faces right or six surfaces okay so now from here we just need to determine which surfaces share dimensions okay so i'm gonna start off by just highlighting them so that you guys see what's going on so we're going to first see which faces share the same dimensions okay so i'm going to start off with this one so this part so this is the first face and that other part those two they both share dimensions okay so how would we calculate the area of this part so i'm going to say area of the red part is equal to what's the length what is the area of a rectangle how do you calculate an area of a rectangle area of a rectangle is your length multiplied by your width right so when we're calculating the area of the red part what are we looking at we're looking at the length for the red part and the width for the red part okay 
So what is the length for the rate part? The length for the rate part is 240. So the length, I said, is the longest part. Okay, 240 millimeter. Multiply. And then what is the width for the rate part? The width for the rate part is that 70 millimeters. Okay, so multiplied by 70 millimeters. And we've got two of those because it's the, that front part and the back side of it, right? So you need to multiply it by two, okay? So then we determine the other faces of this rectangular prism, okay? I'm going to highlight those faces in yellow, right? So let's look at the sides. So if you look at that side, okay, and this side, they share the same length and the same width. So those are the... That's the other the other two parts where we're going to be um, calculating the areas of, right? And we're going to multiply that by two. So number two, area of yellow part is equal to the length. It's the longest part multiplied by the width. Okay, so what is the length of the yellow part, right? So we can see here that the length for the yellow part is that 112. Okay, so it's going to be your length multiplied by your width. The length of your yellow part is 112 millimeters. The length is the longest part my, multiplied by what is the width for our yellow part? It's that part there, right? So it's our height of 70 millimeters. So it's going to be 70 millimeters, right? Okay. And we've got two yellow parts. So we need to multiply that by two. And we're not done, right? There's a part or two parts or two faces that we haven't included. And that's our top and our bottom part, right? So it's that there, that part there, top and the bottom surface, okay, right? So same thing. To calculate your area, area of your green part or green surface, what does green surfaces, right? Is equal to your length times it by your width, right? What is the length for our green surface, right? So if you look at where our green line is, right, you can see that the longest side is the 240. So that is the length, 240 millimeters multiplied by what is the width for the green part, that part there, right? So it's 112 millimeters and you've got two of those. So you multiply by two, okay? And then you get your answer. So I'm not really punching down the answer. Yeah, because in this question, we are not really calculating the surface area, but we are basically determining which formula is correct. So you, you won't be able to determine which formula is correct if you don't know how to even construct that formula, how to even calculate the total surface area of a prism, a rectangular prism, right? So that is basically what I'm doing. I'm showing you guys how you get the total surface area of a prism, right? Therefore, the total surface area then of this prism Using basically what we have here, the total surface area, TSA's total surface area, is we are basically going to take up all this. It's that 240 millimeters multiplied by 70 millimeters times 2, right? So it's going to be 240 multiplied by 70 millimeters multiplied by 2, right? Plus, when you're calculating the total surface area, we're calculating the total areas of the surfaces of the shape okay so to get the total area of all the surfaces like i mentioned you need to basically add them up right because you already know what is the total area of the green surfaces what is the total area of the yellow surfaces what is the total area of the red surfaces and then we just add them up okay so we've added the red part plus what is the total area of the green uh, part we said it's 112 millimeters multiplied by 70 millimeters multiplied by two because there's two of those right plus the green surface right it's the 240 millimeters multiplied by 112 millimeters multiplied by two okay so that is basically how we will calculate the total surface area of this rectangular prism okay so that is the formula that we need to look for in the options that yeah okay so we can see that yeah option a is incorrect right because area of the front side it needs to be multiplied by two area of the right side and the left side okay or the area of the right side plus the area of the left side so it needs to be area of the front side plus area of the back side area of the right side plus area of the left side 
area of the top side is area of the bottom side but this is not like that so a is definitely not the option okay let's look at this one 2 times 240 times 70 plus 2 times 240 times 112 plus 2 so we can see in this case right that the correct answer that we are looking for is b b is the correct answer because that matches basically how we calculated our um total surface area okay so please note in the exam you don't have to do this but i've basically incorporated a explanation on how you actually calculate the total surface area of a rectangular prism in this right um not just me just telling you that the answer is b why is it b i'm showing you guys why the answer is b okay but in your test you can literally just write question 1.2.1 okay the answer is b okay and you get just two marks for saying that okay let's go on to the next question question 1.2.2 state the unit of measurement for the volume of this prism. please note again guys i'm just going deep into explanations so you guys know how if you were to be asked to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism like this you would know how you calculate it but here you just need to just state the answer but i'm going deeper into the explanation so you guys know what's happening right so if you had to basically calculate the volume of this brick guys we know okay if we had to calculate the volume right volume is equal to your length multiplied by your width multiplied by your height right in this case what is our length our length would be 240 millimeters what would be our width our width would be that 100 and 112 millimeters and what would be our height our height would be that 70 millimeters right so if we had to calculate the volume of this rectangular prism our volume would be one eight eight one six zero zero millimeters right so this question is asking millimeters right let me show you because it's millimeters multiplied by millimeters multiplied by millimeters the unit that we are going to have for volume is millimeters cubed and this is basically what this question is asking there right it's asking for what are those units there right so we know when we're calculating volume the unit of measurement for the volume of this brick will be millimeters cubed right so to just give your answer for question 1.1.2 you don't have to give to this whole shebang here i'm just doing that to show you if you had to calculate volume this is what you need to do but we're not calculating volume they just want the unit of measurement um for the volume of this brick in this case the answer that you're just supposed to give millimeters cubed or you can say cubic right okay so either one of these answers that you've given will be correct okay so same here okay if you've just given your uh, millimeters cubed you will get your two right two there all right let's go to question 1.1 1.23 convert the length of this brick to meters okay right so like i mentioned again guys you don't have to show all of these things that i'm doing i'm just doing them because you guys are studying and when you're studying you need to be sure that you are using the same or a similar approach when you're thinking about the solution or when you're answering this question this is how your mind needs to think as you are solving your, your problems or as you are giving your answers this is the, the 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 level of thinking that you need to take okay that shows that you're really understanding what you're doing okay so question 1.2.3 so we want to basically convert the length of the brick to meters so what is the length of this brick let's just start we know the length of the brick it's given there it's 240 millimeters so we want to basically convert this millimeters to meters okay so i'm gonna take you guys to what we done um we did in our measurements video tutorial i explained how we convert from a smaller unit to a bigger unit right so this is going to look familiar okay when we're converting from kilometers to meters we multiply by a thousand okay? when you convert from meters to centimeters we multiply by a hundred when we convert from centimeters to millimeters you multiply by 10 
So from here, we move, you, when you move from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, you multiply, right? But you multiply by a thousand to go to meters, from meters to centimeters, you multiply by a hundred, from centimeters to millimeters, you multiply by 10. Then what happens when you're moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit? You divide, right? So you divide by that top number there, right? So you're going to divide by 10. To move from millimeters to centimeters you're going to divide by 100 to move from centimeters to meters and you're going to divide by a thousand to move from meters to kilometers right so in this case if you're using this right to help you um convert from your millimeters to meters right you will just take the 240 millimeters right and then you ask yourself i'm here we are currently here okay we are currently here right and we want to get to meters. We want to get there. So what do we need to do to get to meters? We first need to take this 240 and you just divide it by 10, right? But when you divide by 10, it only um, leaves you with units and centimeters. So we're not that. Then we also need to divide by 100. Okay, so you take that 240, you divide by 10, you get your answer. Divide by 100, you get your answer. Right. So in actuality, right, what are you doing is that you're just dividing by a thousand. OK, so if you divide by 10, divide by 10 and you divide by 100. So actually, you're just dividing by a thousand. But this is also fine. Take it to 40, divide by 10, divide by 100. Okay? Your answer is 0 0.24 meters. So that takes you to meters. Or you can just write it as 240 millimeters divided by 1,000, which will still give you 0 0.24 meters. Or, okay, or you can answer your question like this, right? We know that one, one meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. We know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. We know that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, right? So we can also use this, right, to help us convert. I'm just writing all of them there so that you always have them at the back of your head when you're just doing your measurement questions, right? You don't really need them, but I'm just doing them so that they help you for study purposes when you're taking down your notes. So please, I don't want to hear people saying, but you don't have to do this. But you Guys, it's just for studying purposes so that you've got your notes in order. Okay, so here, guys, still we want to convert that 240 millimeters. So you need to multiply by what do you want? So we want to convert this millimeters to meters. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on this. Okay, this is what is going to help us convert our millimeters to meters. Okay, and then from here, right, it becomes nice and easy. You multiply by what you want. So you want your units in meters. So you're going to multiply by your one meter divided by what you have. You've got your units in millimeters. So it's going to be a thousand millimeters, right? And then here, guys, you already know that here, this is a great way for us to see that our units are canceling, okay? This is the same as saying 240 divided by one, okay? Right? So this is a great way for you to see that actually are your units really cancelling to leave you with your units in meters. So if it's 240, it's like saying 240 divided by 1,000. So if you do that, you'll still get the same amount of 0 0.24 meters. Okay, so there's just two ways in which you can do this depending on how you think, right? So I think I've basically um, catered to everyone, right? So this question is out of two marks, right? You get a mark for showing that you basically divide it by a thousand and you get one mark there for your final answer. So it's out of two. Same thing here. If you chose this way, you'll get one mark for showing that you divide by a thousand, you'll get a final mark there. Okay. So that's just two ways in which you can do it. Okay. So I'm just catering for everyone. And let's go on to the next question. Question 1.2.4. Determine the maximum number of rows of bricks that can be stacked height wise to a height of 2,100 2, millimeters. So we've got a height of 200 and, why do I keep saying 200? We've got a height of 2,100 millimeters, right? 
And we want to basically, basically determine how many bricks can we stack up until that height. Okay. So when we're dealing with the height, we already know that. We already know that the height of our brick is 70 millimeters. So we can basically write, we can basically write that down as one brick height, right, is equal to 70 millimeters, right? So we want to basically determine how many bricks can we stack to that height, okay? So we want to basically, we've got a height of 200, 2,100. So that is our height, right? Okay. And we want to determine how many bricks can we stack, okay? So I think I should just leave it like this. One brick gives us a height of 70 millimeters, okay? So what do we want? We want the bricks that we can stack. So you multiply it by your brick, okay? And you divide it by what you have. We already have the dimensions for the height, which is your 70. Okay, so you'll see, right, with this way, you'll see that actually your millimeters will cancel. Millimeters and millimeters will cancel. That just shows you whatever answer that we get will tell you about how many bricks we will need. Okay, so it's just like saying 200, and this is the same as saying 200, 2,100 millimeters, right, divided by 70 millimeters, right? That's the same as just doing that, which is equal to 30 bricks. So this answer just tells us, right, we need to basically stack up 30 or oh, 30 bricks will take us to a height of 2,100 millimeters. Okay, so that is our final answer. Okay. okay, you will get a mark for obviously showing that you understand that one brick is equal to your 70 millimeters. So you get a mark for that divided by 70 and for your final mark, that 30 bricks. Okay, so this is for three marks. So it's always important to think of it this way, okay? One brick is equal to 70 millimeters. One brick is equal to 70 uh, millimeters in height, right? And then from there, you ask yourself, we currently have a height of 2,100. You multiply by, what do you want? We actually just want how many bricks, okay? So we want the bricks, okay? You multiply by the bricks and you divide by what you have, which is your units in millimeters. Because... When you do it like that, you'll see that oh, actually your millimeters and your millimeters will cancel. And whatever answer you will get, it just tells you how many bricks you will need to get to a height of 2,100 millimeters. Okay, so I hope this question, I was able to break up and go into detail with all of these explanations. Because honestly speaking, that is just the main point. I want to go into detail into all of these um, solutions. It will do you absolutely no good just knowing that the answer is B. Just knowing that the volume here is just millimeters um, cubed. How you actually learn is understanding the why to the reason why your answer is millimeters cubed. So that is basically why I'm doing my solutions in this way, why I'm giving you detailed explanations as to why your answer should be what um, it is instead of just knowing that the answer is millimeters cubed. That's not going to help you with anything. It's not going to help you with understanding proof. Okay. So I hope this video was super informative. I went into depth with all of these explanations. I hope you guys appreciate them, right? And I'll see you guys on my next video tutorial. We are going to be tackling question 1.3. Okay, so I hope you guys are subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get um, notified every single time I upload a video tutorial, guys. And I'm going to be going through these video tutorials back to back to help you guys, um, just to make sure that you guys are prepared for your um, June exam. So I'll see you guys on my next upload. That is it, guys. And I'll see you guys on my next upload, Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Bye, guys.